Greetings everyone and welcome to Lucas Brews. In today's video we're going to have a look at the first to fight 170 second scale German SDKFZ251-4 half track. So this is the ammunition carrying version of the famous armoured personnel carrier from the Second World War. And first to fight, it's a Polish company, they do 70 second scale uh, armour and ground vehicles as well as figures. Uh, focusing on basically the early stages of World War II, so they do a lot of Polish and German as well as a couple French and I think they've done a few British vehicles now. Um, so yeah, brilliant little company, a lot of the kits are very simple and easy to build but still quite nicely detailed as you'll see when we put this one together. And uh, I'll leave a little link in the description down below for Tectonic Hobbies where you can buy this kit and uh, many others. The box contains five sprues moulded in dark grey plastic and a set of decals for three different vehicles from the Poland campaign. There's also a booklet, all in Polish unfortunately, but if you can translate it, it has information on the German invasion of Poland, a nice little painting guide with Vallejo colours for the vehicle, and also a few reference photos and finally a bit of marketing material for the First to Fight's wargaming system. The actual assembly instructions consist of a small drawing on the back of the box which is a bit hard to read but lucky this kit is quite simple to build. The first step to build this kit was to cut out the parts from the sprue. I use a set of side cutters to cut away the parts I need from the sprue and any excess parts and afterwards I use my file to sand off any of the remaining bits of sprue. As you can see a lot of parts such as the tracks and the suspension system are all moulded as one piece, which means some of the detail is a little bit simplified, but overall I think you'll agree it's quite nice, even for 170 second scale. I carefully cut out the front steering assembly, before then removing some of the excess flash that was on the suspension setup, and then gluing a little bit of Revell Contactor Professional onto the points of contact between the lower hull and the suspension. I then firmly pressed the suspension and the lower hull together and held them there for a few seconds while the glue bonded. With the suspension in place, I then glued the steering system onto the front part of the vehicle. The fit for this part was alright, but it was a little bit fiddly to get it to line up and sit nicely. I held it again in place for a little while it dried, and then moved on to adding the front bumper. This one was a little bit trickier to fit, and I did cut out a bit of fiddling around to get it to work, but eventually it slid into place. I then cut out the side guards for the mud skirts, which I'd then glue on a little bit later. The interior includes a nice little steering wheel, and a small bulkhead for the front, along with some ammunition since this version is for the ammunition carrying. Although they were included, I decided instead to use the four seats rather than have it as the ammunition carrying variant of the SDKFZ251. The seats had a nice little bit of detail, but they needed a little bit of cleanup. The steering wheel glued into place nicely, and then I glued the rest of the interior parts. There's also some nice moulded details on the radio and the dashboard which I painted later. The rear seats all fitted in quite nicely. They have a little notch at the bottom that helps them slide into the floor. I glued the front bulkhead with all the driver's gauges and the radio and steering wheel before gluing on the mud or side skirts to the bottom of the hull. They slotted in quite nicely and I just firmly pressed them into place and they sat there. There is also an armoured kind of cover that goes over the suspension on the underside of the vehicle. I glued it in place and it fitted quite easily. I used a sharp hobby knife and also a small needle to scratch in some small slits for the lamps at the front since they were missing because of the simplified detail, and then I moved on to painting the interior. First of all, I did two coats of Tamiya XF63 German Grey for the interior of the half track. I painted both the lower hull on the inside and the upper hull. After opening up the paint, I give it a nice stir with a cocktail stick and then I dab my brush in the paint and add a little bit of water to thin it down. One of the advantages of acrylic paint is that a lot of it is water based, such as these Tamiya ones. So I add a little bit of water to the paint to thin it down so that my layers of paint are nice and thin and don't end up very thick and sloppy, which means you're more likely to show your paint lines. 
To keep the paint as uniform as possible, I try to apply it in the same direction whenever I can, especially on larger surfaces. But for some of the smaller areas that need a little bit of dabbing to reach, I'll do that. The main thing to keep in mind is that even if your first coat of paint does not fully cover the original colour of plastic underneath, it's alright as the second layer will help build it up. After applying the first layer and letting it dry for a little while, I then apply the second layer in pretty much the same fashion. After the second coat of paint has dried, I apply one more layer of paint to the entire interior of the kit before moving on to painting the finer details. The first detail I paint is with XF1 flat black. I paint the padding around the steering wheel, the radio, the seats, and also some of the dials on the driver's position. I use a very fine brush and try to apply the paint only to the raised details, especially in terms of the seats, since the padding sticks out from the base of the vehicle. If you make any mistakes, don't worry as you can always come along later with a small brush and apply a bit of German grey to the areas that you accidentally overpainted. I use a fine brush to dab some XF1 flat white onto the radio and the various gauges in the driver's compartment before getting a little bit of flat earth to paint the spare rifles that are on the wall on the upper section of the interior of the hull. I thought this was quite a nice detail, even if it was a little bit simplified. I use a little bit of Vallejo Vermilion Red to paint some red on the dials, and a little bit of flat aluminium to paint the ends of the rifles, and then I dab it into the areas where the crew would likely walk, and on some of the exposed surfaces to create some metal chipping. And with all the details painted, I then come along with a fine brush and some German grey and neaten up any mistakes, especially around the rifles which were a little bit small and tricky to paint, and also around the seats, and I remove some of the excess weathering before gluing the two hull halves together. I apply a band of Revell Contactor Professional on the lower hull's edges, and then I push the upper hull into place. The parts fitted alright together, However, there was still a little bit of a gap which I will later cover up with some putty. While the parts dry, I hold them together firmly using a little bit of Tamiya masking tape. After the parts have been left for a couple hours to bond together, I then remove the Tamiya masking tape. Then I get a little bit of Vallejo water-based putty, and using a cocktail stick, I apply it onto the areas where there's a little bit of a gap, mainly where the two hull halves meet. After I've gone along the entire seam line where the two hull halves met and filled all the gaps in with putty, I then cut out the machine guns and the rear pindle to hold the rear machine gun. The details on the machine gun are quite nicely moulded. I used the needle to make the hole for the machine gun at the front a little bit wider to make it fit in a little bit easier, and then I glue it in place using some Revell Contactor Professional. I do the same thing with the rear pindle that sadly does not include a machine gun but this would have been part of the infantry rather than the vehicle itself so it's pretty normal to see them without them at the rear. With the putty now dry and hard I use a file to remove the excess putty by sanding it away and then I use a sharp hobby knife to rescore any of the panel lines that I've lost that I want to keep. I decided to leave the tracks and the wheels off while painting and weathering the model so that it was a little bit easier to access, so I began painting the first coat of Tamiya XF63 German Grey. I apply the paint in much the same fashion I used to paint the interior of the kit, making sure it's thinned down with a little bit of water so my paint is not too thick, and applying it as much as possible in the same direction in terms of brush strokes, and changing direction only when I have to, to try and keep them as uniform as possible. I repeat this step twice so that I end up with three layers of German grey over the original plastic. Since the kit has been moulded in dark grey, and the colour is pretty similar to the one that I ended up painting, you don't really need as many layers of paint, however if the German grey was a lighter colour, 
or the colour of the plastic was a different mould, you might want to consider doing four or even five layers of paint. I didn't bother priming the model since I'd given the parts a nice clean to get any oil and grease off, and I found the paint conformed quite nice to the plastic. However, if the parts had been moulded in various different colours of plastic, I would have probably considered giving it a prime then to make it a little bit more uniform. I painted the track separately with two layers of German grey, basically covering the entirety with German grey and then painting the finer details afterwards, similar to what I did with the interior. Once the final layer of German grey was dried on the hull and I'd finished painting the second coat onto the running gear and the wheels, I then decided to apply the decals. The schemes included are pretty basic, they're all in German grey and have the early war white cross markings. The decals for this kit though are really quite nice and thin, and they didn't silver at all. To apply the decals, I simply soak them in water, then apply them onto the model using a brush, dab away the excess water with a cotton tip, and once the decals had been on for a tiny bit, I apply a bit of Tamiya decal adhesive to help them adhere to the model and sink into any of the recessed details to make them look more like they were painted. I then wipe away any of the excess Tamiya decal adhesive using a cotton bud. Once the decals had dried, I used a fine brush to paint some of the finer details that are moulded into the hull. Since they're moulded into the hull, it's a little bit tricky to paint them, and I do prefer kits such as the Ravel ones where all the tools and accessories can be painted separately on the sprue. However, if you've got a nice and steady hand and you use somewhat of a dry brush technique so you're only painting the raised details, it can be achieved. I used a little bit of flat earth to paint things such as the shovels and pioneering tools on the side, and also the machine gun hand grips. A little bit of XF22 RLM grey was painted onto the fire extinguisher, and I painted the exhausts titanium gold. I used the same fine brush to apply some flat aluminium onto the pioneering tools, taking care to paint the sections that aren't covered by straps and all of that to hold them in place, and then I also painted the barrel of the machine gun flat aluminium. I painted two thin layers of XF1 carefully onto the outside rubber of the wheels using a nice fine brush. I used the same fine brush and the flat black to paint the main body of the machine gun before moving on to painting the finer details on the running gear and the tracks. I use a fine brush to carefully apply some watered down flat aluminium onto the track links, taking care to try and paint the edges using somewhat of a dry brushing technique since the track is raised from the main layer of road wheels. There's also a few small sections that are visible on the inside of the wheels where the track is, so I carefully painted those as well. The details on the tracks were pretty good considering they'd been moulded in one piece. As you can see, I got a little bit of extra flat aluminium and dabbed it onto parts of the sprocket to do a bit of metal chipping, but later on I toned down this effect by applying a little bit of German grey back over the top of the wheels. One of the most tricky parts of doing this kit was to paint the rubber on the road wheels, which I carefully did using a very fine brush. If you make any mistakes doing fine details such as this, don't worry, 
as you'll see I later went over with a little bit of German grey and neatened up any mistakes. I also used a fine brush to transform the early war white plus or Balkenkrutz symbols on the side of the truck to make them later war by painting a little grey streak between them to split them up. Following this I returned again to the tracks and painted any mistakes I'd made or extra chipping that I didn't want using the fine brush and a bit of German grey. The last bit of painting I did before moving on to the weathering was to make sure that I'd painted all the straps for the tools. The first step of weathering for me is to apply a bit of metal chipping. Basically I get a fine brush and apply some flat aluminium onto the end of it, making sure the paint is relatively dry so it doesn't flow too much creating unrealistic shapes, and then I dab it into the various access hatches and exposed surfaces that would be likely to receive metal chipping. I focus, as I said, on hatches that are regularly opened by the crew, on the side skirts and mud guards where dirt and rocks might get flicked up and scratch the paint, and also on the exposed surfaces on the edges of the crew compartment where crew members might have their gear hanging off or might simply scrape it as they're getting in and out via the door. I also apply a tiny bit of metal chipping onto some of the exposed wheel nuts on the road wheels before putting the metal chipping away and getting out my next weathering tool, which is the Tamiya panel liner set. I apply it onto some of the access hatches I wanted to highlight and onto the machine gun barrel to help highlight the details and darken the flat aluminium to make it more of a gun metal. The panel liner ascent is really good at darkening things and highlighting details and it can also be used as I did around the access hatches to create a little bit of oil leak and streaking kind of effects. You can basically apply it onto the Tamiya acrylics as I've done and then when you're finished applying it and it has dried you can then get a very fine brush and a bit of Tamiya enamel thinners and wipe the excess off with either the brush or a cotton tip. This can then soften the effect and if you streak it back can make it look a little bit like some leaks or some sort of grease and as though the vehicle is a little bit weathered. To create some dirt effects I use the Tamiya weathering powders. Around the wheels and the tracks I apply a fair bit using the included applicator by smudging it into the areas to create some dust and dirt and also dabbing it around the edges and streaking it down the side using my finger to wipe away some of the excess. You can also make it thicker by using a bit of water or wipe away excess that's on the vehicle by using water to streak it away. I also used a fine brush to get some finer kind of streaking patterns down the side as if a bit of dirt had been kind of washed down the sides of the vehicle over time. The Tamiya weathering powder has a few different colours and one set includes sand and mud so I used a little bit of mud as the darker colour around the tracks and made sure I made it a little bit thicker using some water when I applied it and I also used a little bit of some rust effects to make the mud a little bit darker around some spots on the track and to create a little bit of a rusting effect on the exhaust that I painted gold previously. With the weathering to the hull completed, I then glued the tracks into place, and after letting the tracks and wheels dry for a little while, I then got some Tamiya XF1 flat black and watered it down a lot. Once I'd gotten it to a very very wet consistency which made the paint flow into basically only the gaps, I then applied it all over the tracks to make them darker and also onto the running gear and wheels to make them darker and highlight their details. This also makes them look a little bit oily and dirty. Watered down black was also applied to the underside of the hull to create a little bit of an illusion of some shadow. A little bit of flat black was also dabbed onto the machine gun to create some extra dark smoke effects and the final step to weathering the half track was to add a little bit of Vallejo's weathering effects mud and grass using a cocktail stick to dab it onto the tracks, the wheels and the side skirts to simulate a bit of dirt and grass getting caught up in the running gear of the vehicles that drives off road. And once the half track was complete the last thing to do was add the crew figure. I cut off the excess sprue and then used a file to remove the considerably large seam line on the figure before painting him on the sprue, first in a coat of XF65 field grey. 
After I'd applied two coats of the XF65 Field Grey, I then moved on to painting his finer details. I used a very fine brush to apply a thin coat of Vallejo 955 Flat Flesh onto his hands and face, before moving on to painting a coat of XF1 Flat Black onto his boots. Whilst I had the black out, I also painted the belt around his waist. I painted a further two coats on his hands and face, this time a slightly lighter flesh colour, Vallejo 927 Dark Flesh, to get a little bit more highlight on his face. I painted his map and holster XF52 Flat Earth, gave him another coat of dark flesh to finalise the skin, add a layer of German grey onto his helmet, and then I cut his arm out and after sanding a little bit of the excess paint off, glued it into position. Finally, I painted a little bit of XF16 Flat Aluminium onto his helmet to create some metal chipping, and a bit of Vallejo Silver onto his belt buckle, and finally I applied a liberal coat of Tamiya Panel Liner all over the figure to help highlight his details and make him look a little bit dirty. And with the crew figure completed, I added him into the half track and the model was finished. Overall, I would definitely recommend this kit, I had a lot of fun building it. If you're interested in something German that's from World War II in a small 70 second scale, and um, especially if you're a beginner or a war gamer, this is a great kit. It's not expensive, it costs about 15 AUD, and it's super easy to put together. I did it in a, probably around about 6 hours or so. Um, so definitely recommend it if you're new or in a bit of a rush to build up a lot of half tracks for some reason. Um, first of all, I do a lot of other really great early war German stuff, and also Polish and French now, so definitely recommend having a look at them as a brand. Again, super easy to put together, although there's some details that are a little bit simplified, such as the tracks since they're moulded as one piece, or all the tooling being moulded into the hull, you can't remove it unless you sand it, and it's a little bit tricky to paint, but at least there's still some details there. Uh, and it's it's done to be nice and simple and it, it is it's a great little kit And if you're after this sort of thing definitely recommend having a go at it It's not going to cause you many problems. It's not going to set your bank too far back and uh, it's it's a great little kit Thanks very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video If you did, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my youtube channel and uh, Special shout out to my wonderful patrons for helping me fund my videos uh, you guys are wonderful people, and uh, if you want to join my patrons and see exclusive content and help support my channel, be sure to check out my Patreon in the description of my video. And uh, thank you very much for watching, and until the next video, model on!